Hello, good people of YouTube, Mount Batten here, and today we are taking a look at the new Tier 10 Soviet aircraft carrier, the Nakimov. Now this game we're watching right now, this is actually my second ever game in the ship. Now, this isn't my highest damage game in the ship, but it's probably my most um, active and interesting and definitely the one that I had the biggest amount of influence in, in in terms of how the battle went. Still a pretty high damage game for myself. Now if you don't know, I'm an absolutely terrible uh, CV player. I will never say I'm good in CVs until I actually get a lot better in them. Uh, my best CV is actually the Graf Zeppelin for some reason in terms of the average the average uh, damage, my stats and all, and my PR. This only ship I have like decent PR in at all in terms of, of CVs. But the Nakamov, despite me being a terrible CV player, uh, even a lowly terrible CV player like myself has been able to do quite well in this ship. And by quite well, I mean like my first game of the ship, I almost hit 200,000 damage. And I had several games throughout the night where I came within just a couple of strikes more of 200,000 damage in this ship. Which, 200,000 damage in a tier 10 ship is very, very, very good. Now, it might happen every now and then in a battleship or a cruiser or a destroyer. But, um, you normally have to be a pretty decent player in those ships to pull that off. Let alone in a CV. Now, of course, some CVs are more conducive to getting higher damage numbers. And sure, again, with good CV players, anything is possible. But this ship, for someone like me to do that well, that consistently in this ship, uh, that's a uh, sign it might be a little bit overtuned at the moment. And I'm pretty sure that's the case here. So the Nakamov works, of course, just like all the other Soviet CVs. You get one squadron, and that entire squadron attacks the target at once, like you're about to see me do to this Des Moines here. What you're about to see happen to this Des Moines is pretty par for the course for what will happen to you if you give the, your side to a Nakamov. So I drop the skip bombers here, eight skip bombs. Let's go. Uh, they do about 8k maximum damage each, and I've just removed about mm, 20k from that gentleman's health once you add the uh, fires on top of the sheer pin damage. And that's pretty much what, hap what happens to the Nakamov and what this ship can do to you. So, needless to say, watch your signs when Nakamov's in game, and for the love of God, do not give this ship your side. You will cease to exist like that Des Moines did here. Uh, now, of course, I didn't remove all of his health, but I removed half of his health, half of his health put him on fire. He had to use his DC. Uh, now he's spotted, and now he's about to go down here. Uh, so, easily, easily, I could follow this, follow this up with these planes right here. The rocket planes on the Nakamov, and completely remove this guy from the match. These rocket planes. The very first time I used them, I did 20k to uh, Georgia with these planes to Georgia, a, a tier 9 battleship with fantastic AA. Uh, and again, with the Nakamov and the other Soviet CVs, it's not different for the other Soviet CVs. The, the planes do launch their attacks from a pretty far distance to where you can stay out of most of the close range AA that will normally tear up planes. Uh, same here with the Nakamov, but again, you've got a lot more and a lot better stuff to throw at the enemy ships. So, yeah. And the rockets are, in Wargaming's own word, essentially the Tiny Tim rockets that the Midway gets. So they have great pin, great chance of starting a fire, and you get 32 of them in one go. You might be thinking, 32, that's a bit, ain't it? Yep, four per plane, and all the planes attack in the squadron. So you got eight planes attacking at once with four rockets each. 32 rockets going at the target. And plus, as you might have noticed there when I was attacking that Thunderer, the reticle isn't large like FDRs. It's nice and small, despite launching 32 Tiny Tims at the target. Now, I don't know what happened to this Thunder guy here. I think he might have just given up, but uh, here goes my next round of skip bombers off on him. And I thought he was going to go for it, so I gave him a bit of a lead. He didn't, so a decent amount of the skip bombs miss, and a couple hit his belt, but who cares? I set two fires. The guy burned, burned down. Now, Grant, I don't know if he just stopped or if he went AFK or if he disconnected. Perfectly still target. Uh, if I would have backed up the uh, reticle more to the left, I definitely probably would have just removed him in one go. 
now uh, the replayer for whatever reason it puts the reticle for the the planes a bit higher than it normally is so just imagine it being a notch or two lower and that's about where I'm actually aiming so you might be thinking so th this ship's clearly busted then if you're able to do such amazing alpha um yeah I think there's some things that are a little bit too much on it like for one the size of the reticle with uh, the rocket planes like Look, look at this seriously so look how big the reticle is right now going for the attack look how much that shrinks by and that's that's not even the full uh shrinkage of the reticle you can see the lines are there it gets to where those lines are at as with all the reticles um and it's like normal rocket plane reticles for 32 tiny tims now what are the downsides to this ship well the planes don't have a lot of health at all really so anytime you encounter any actual AA, and if you fly into it, it's it's going to really ruin your day. But with the range at which you kind of have to drop a lot of this ordnance, like these skip bombers, you need a bare minimum. And I'm talking about bare minimum, like you're cutting it close, around 7 kilometers for the, these skip bombers to fully uh, bounce and get their full accuracy, like see here. Uh, 6.3 kilometers away, I start to dive down, and this is cutting it fairly close. I don't have a whole lot of time to adjust or anything. And this is with me pulling the brakes, too, on the ship. Drop it about 3.6 kilometers just on the inner edge of the Yemi's AA. Yemi still is able to speed up, maneuver, turn out, and only eat three of my skip bombs. And still starts a fire on the ship, but he avoided the bulk of the damage. But I'm able to follow that up right away again with these rocket planes that I can pretty much guarantee most of these rocket planes are going to hit the Yami. Now, the Yami isn't the best ship to be attacking with the Nakamo because it's pretty well protected from most of its uh, ordnance. Uh, it's a pretty well-armored ship on the side. It's not like the uh, Thunderer, the Georgia, the Iowa, the Montana. It's got 32 millimeters all the way around it to where, you know, the skip bombers and the rockets can easily pin but it's what i can attack right now because if i want to go for the montana that is squishier well i gotta fly through the yammies aa you see here i kind of botched this uh this line up here but because again shooting 32 rockets who cares i started another fire after i just forced the man to use his damage gun so there another fire on the yammy but if i want to go for the monty i'd have to fly through the yammy's aa then into the monty's aa and then poof there go your planes so you don't really have the ability to pick and choose your targets too much unless they're uh, spread out a lot by themselves and then you can really just have your way with them with other cvs you can kind of you know you can brunt through the aa a little bit because it's like on most of the tier 10 ships they have uh the hill on the uh, dive on the on the torpedo bombers at least and like the uh, Richtofen has the hill on the dive bombers has a huge squadron of dive bombers so you can afford to kind of put put push your way through some of the AA and get to another ship with a Nakamov you, you really don't you have to just go for what you can get in my case it's this Yami so again pull up on him and my fire is just went out on him I believe and no problem though because there you go he's dead now too now, granted, he was a little bit alone and such, but still, I just bullied the crap out of him. Now, in addition to that, with the planes being very lightly armored and having a very small health pool, they are really slow. 172 knots is, a, is their cruising speed, with the build that I have on them at least. And as you can tell, their engine boost is laughable at best. Um, you get a couple seconds of it when you let the bar fully build up, and then your engine boost consumable gives you four, I think, five more seconds of engine boost. So it's really nothing too great. But with a rocket assist to take off, you can afford to park a little bit closer to the enemy team and just keep cycling planes in and out left and right like you guys have been seeing me do like with the uh, the yammy there and i'm actually still a bit further away because i still haven't really got my build for the ship tuned in yet i still have a lot of points into like the torpedo planes which i haven't even talked about yet because I, I i barely use them because who cares when you're doing this much damage with the uh he rockets and the skip bombers now behold this elbing right here okay um, guy makes the mistake, keeps selling perfectly straight to me. Here goes my rocket planes, and there goes half of his health. <laughs> In one run, there goes half of his health. Now, again, man didn't touch his rudder at all. So, again, if you don't do anything, if you don't take any evasive action, 
you are you are you are going to lose half of your health if you're a cruiser or destroyer and if you're a battleship you're probably going to eat like a solid 20k chunk of damage if you do nothing at all so yeah the ship is just the king of punishing broadsides um but does that make it OP that it punishes players that don't take any evasive action that hard? Ah, not really, because, again, you should be maneuvering. And if you do maneuver, you will, again, ruin the CV's day if you maneuver. Um, but again, the things that I think are broken about it aren't really that it can do that. It's just that, like, again, with the, the, the reticle... On the rocket planes, that's that's kind of silly in my opinion. That it, you get thirty-two rockets and you can cram them all in that one reticle. Oh, and w watch this, okay? Guy's got five thousand health left. I just pop up on him, uh, and just decide. Oh, I'm gonna single line drop this guy and goodbye, Mr. Elbing. Set two fires on him. <laughs> uh, now the other thing I think about the ship is that the planes are far too nimble. Uh, I was really surprised that I could do that on stream where I could just, you know, just uh, pull the handbrake and drop single, uh, single, single line drop on him, that man from just sit, spotting him from two kilometers away. Um, FDR's planes can't, uh, can't really do that because they, they're, they're very sluggish. And I thought that these planes were going to be that sluggish too, because they were so, they're so slow. And normally that's, you know, pretty sluggish planes in, in this game. You know, I'm not saying in real life, but if, because the plane's slow, it should be hard to maneuver, but uh, hard to maneuver but in this game that kind of goes together the planes are slow they turn very sluggishly um and I, I would think with a plane with a carrier that needs such big run-ups for its planes that would go hand in hand but apparently not i think that's nothing that that should be um changed a little bit now i'm saying the that the plane should handle like absolute molasses garbage crap no i'm just saying i don't think you should be able to do that with that with this level of alpha um, this Montana here, I thought he was actually selling broadside to me. I didn't look at the map. He's actually selling in to me. I probably could have killed him there if I had put the proper amount of lead on him. But I, again, I thought he was going in a different direction. So, yeah, the Nakamov. Um, will it get nerfed? I'm sure they'll probably tweak it in a couple of months. Um, it might be another Kremlin situation where they, for some reason, decide that some other aspect about the ship needs to be changed before they start addressing, like, what really needs to be changed on it. Um, they might tweak the alpha a bit because, again, getting cons consistent 20k runs on ships that are broadside to use a bit much. I mean, like, any ship in the game, especially at tier 10, higher tier ships, can punish the crap out of you if you show them broadside. But most other ships, there's a fair amount of RNG involved, like battleships. Raise your hand here if you've shot at a broadside target from within like 15 kilometers. You overpinned, the shells went in the water, RNG told you to take a hike one way or the other. Happens to me all the time, of course, because a battleship with accurate guns like that would be a little bit nutty. <coughs> Thunder! Um, but the CV can consistently do that no matter what. Like Hindenburg right here. Observe, man's got 17k left on him. I get these bombs off, and poof, there goes pretty much all of his remaining health. And uh, then I think the uh, yeah, the Shikishima picks up the kill. Yeah, <laughs> um, and again, that wasn't even with all the bombs hitting because you know I messed up the drop a little bit, and I'm not that great of a CV player. So you can imagine with the ships like in an actual good CV player's hands. I've seen screenshots of. Uh, CV mains doing like 400,000 damage in the ship, which is 100% believable. You know, if, if someone like me can pull off 200k games in my first couple of games in the ship, someone with actually good CV experience can easily just dunk on people in the ship. So, yeah, the ship is a little nutty in my opinion. The reticle for the rocket planes definitely needs to be enlarged. The planes are too maneuverable for the amount of ordnance that they carry and can just dunk on a target if they uh, so choose so. Um, and the alpha probably does need to be toned down a little bit. Uh, the bombs do like 8k maximum damage. Again, that's a little hit though. But you're throwing 8 of them uh, at the target too. And the, the rocket planes are really, really, really nutty. And observe this. I just turn, give myself a big reticle to coat the smoke as much as I can, and boop! There goes the Shimakaze. Yeah, 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 that's that. That's a bit much. The, the rocket planes definitely need, if anything, the rocket planes need a solid 
thwack with the nerf badge. The um, the skip bombers, maybe so too. There's a bit more RNG based on the skip bombers though, uh, just because of the way that they bounce and stuff. So I I do like that. Um, but the rocket planes really for me are what stand out as being really busted right now. Because again, I didn't even use the torpedo bombers that game or the game before that where I got almost two hundred thousand damage. I, I I launched them there at the end just because I was going to go throw them into the um the, the Shimakazu smoke screen. But other than that, I had no need for them at all. And if you're wondering, the torpedo bombers are just like the um, Chikolovs. It's better to approach a ship from the bow or the stern because when you could get the, tor- the torpedo reticle to fully close in, it's just a solid wall of twerps and you're not going to touch that. So the Nakimov right now, yep, yeah, if you see the rocket planes coming, just pray to God and turn into them and don't let, for the love of God, don't let it get the side of your ship to where it can get that full reticle on you because you're going to lose 20k easily or you're going to get set on fire like three or four places if they, they get really lucky, at least two from what I've seen. Uh, but yeah, the ship's a little busted right now. Hopefully they'll get around to nerfing it. Um, of course, Soviet bias, no, no ner- nerf it meme, you know, so forth and so on. But I do think it, it will probably get a, a good thwacking here in a couple of months because Wargame likes to collect their data. But who knows? Who knows? They could surprise us and change it a bit sooner. That would be nice. But yeah, just PSA, be on the lookout for Nakabov. Make sure you're taking evasive action when it approaches you, and make sure you stick with an AA buddy if you get one in your match. So, let me know what you guys think about the Nakamov in the comments down below. If you've managed to get your hands on it yet, do you think it's super busted? You think it's just a little bit overtuned, or you think it's fine as is? Let us know in the comments down below. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Saturday and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you guys again for getting us over 30,000 subs. Um, I'll be probably releasing a video probably on Monday or Tuesday talking about the 30,000 subscriber giveaway. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. Again, hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.